Yeah. Uh, I'm all right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Is your first time in Hong Kong? Yeah. yeah. There you go, sir. If I've been up to much, <laughs> I couldn't possibly divulge that sort of information. <laughs> Take that as a no comment. <laughs> I've been up to anything. Any yeah, we had done a bit yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, other than that, um, <coughs> I'm not at liberty to say what I've been up to. Pretty rude, actually. What about it? It's a cartoon. <laughs> so, where's that from? Today. We, who, who am I supposed to be now? <laughs> oh, is it because we went shopping or something? Yeah. Shop? 70% off? I don't see any of that nonsense. Oh, I think you're taking a video of shopping. You ready now? Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm waiting for you lot. Okay. Ready? Okay. Ready? Okay. So now, um, just come back from Japan. Yeah. Just recently come back from the States. So, um, how, how's it compared to like last time? I mean, how have the fans responded to the new album? What? It, what, in, what in America? Yeah. Well, we didn't split up, so that's, <laughs> that's quite different from last time. Um, it's going all right, you know. It's going as well as we expected, I suppose. All, all the gigs were sold out, and we got towards the end of it, and uh, we didn't pull any gigs, and uh, we had a good time. Yeah, yeah it's been good. It's has been good so far. How's everyone responding to the new album? Have you... um, well, it depends who you talk to. If you talk to the critics in England, then they hate it. But if you talk to the kids, then they love it. So, I don't know. I, I'm not, you know, I, it's, it's pretty hard to judge how people... I mean, you know, all that matters is, like, you know, if the fans of the band like it, then that's all that matters. I'm not really interested in whether, like, journalists like it or anything like that. You know, that's not really important. You know. mm. Well, seven million people bought it, so, <laughs> you know, there must be seven million people who sort of semi-like it. I would imagine. I haven't seen any in the bargain bucket yet. <laughs> um, I was just saying that now that you, um, you work under a lot less pressure, am I right in saying that? Um, no, it's probably the opposite. I think, I, f I don't know, well, dep depends how you perceive pressure, doesn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, you always want to better yourself. You always want to, you know, you always want to, I mean, the pressure for me comes from, from myself, you know what I mean? To better my songwriting and to, you know, just to supersede everything that I've done before. But we're, we're not put on, under any pressure by the record company like that, you know, because, you know, creation ain't like that, you know, isn't run like that. Um, so, you know, there is pressure and then there isn't, you know, at the same time. It's, it's, not, it's not like pressure like, you know, like homeless people are under pressure, aren't they? Because they've got nowhere to live, you know what I mean? Yeah. Are, are you writing more stuff now than you were? Uh, no. Oh, it's, I was going to ask you, um, you wrote most of stuff for Morning Glory a like, long time before and say we'd be here now. Yeah. Um, just jumping ahead a bit, I mean, have you written, does that mean that you've written a lot of stuff for the, the fourth album now? No, well, I you mean, usually write a lot of the stuff on this album, like Stand By Me, Don't Go Away, um, The Girl in a Dirty Shirt, I sort of like, were written before the first album, really. So I tend to write sort of like three albums at a time, but I haven't, I sort of stopped myself from writing at the moment because, you know, I just want to, I just want to sort of like take a year off from writing, really, and um, make a, a contemporary record next time, I suppose, as opposed to, you know, trying to make a record that sounds like it was recorded in 1968, you know what I mean? Sure. Um, so, but, you know, it's not a sprint, it's not a contest, and it's not a race. It's not about, you know, get, you know, let's get the next album out as quickly as possible. It's not, it's not about that, you know. Yeah. It's just about, you know. Basically, I'm just a lazy bastard. <laughs> I can't be asked writing anything at the moment. But. There was a rumour that you were planning to release the fourth album to the year 2000. Is that the Well, I mean, at the end of this tour, which is March, we're, we're taking the rest of the year off, so I'll probably start writing another album in the spring of next year, so that <clears throat> I could take, you know, could take a couple of months to write, and then I got to demo it, which could take another couple, and then to record it could take six months. So 
probably not going to see another Oasis album, probably until the turn of the century, really. But I mean, you know, people, people go, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. It's only like two years, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, you know, we're almost halfway through 1998, you know. But, you know, just, just got to let the, all these other tossers have their, like, 15 minutes of fame, haven't you? And uh, any more singles coming out? I mean, I personally thought the B-sides to Stand By Me should have been in the album. I mean, because it was... Uh... Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, I actually thought the B-sides to Stand By Me was shite, <laughs> apart from going nowhere. <laughs> and I wrote them. But, um... Uh, no, I, 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 the record company want to put out Don't Go Away, but uh, over my dead body will there be another single coming out. Why's that? Well, because if you, have, if you have an A-side, you have to have a B-side, and I'm not writing any songs, <laughs> so they can fuck right off, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was going to ask you, like, I know Liam's like, known to play the guitar and everything. Has he really? Last one. Has he? Yeah, yeah. That's fucking news to me. Do you get any credit for the rest of the band? I mean, and if you do, do you like... I mean, well, the thing about the chaps is, they're the greatest songwriters in their own bedroom, and then when it actually comes to putting the balls on the line and actually trying to do something about it, you'll find that they'll sort of retire to the bar. And, uh, you know, but... Um, I suppose, I suppose one day one of them will write a song, mm. and I'm sure it'll be dreadful. <laughs> Has Liam submitted anything to you, though? Like, Has he submitted anything? Like, just, just himself. OK. No, he's not submitted anything, no. I mean, you know, Liam's, well, Liam tells me that he's got an album written already, but, you know, until, you no, know, until the day that I hear him play it on guitar, then it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, Goldie released his album like, two weeks ago, I think it was, um, and you helped him out on one of the, yeah. one of the tracks. Um, How did it do in England? Did it go number one? Did it? Um, don't think, no. It didn't? It didn't. Even with your help. Uh, but I was going to say, um, your guitar playing was a bit of a departure. That. I mean, did, uh, did you say in that, or was it all...? Yeah, um, well, with guitar playing, it's horses for courses, isn't it? It's like, it's, what, it's, what, it's whatever the track, like, requires, you know. The guitar playing on the Goldie track was particularly um, sort of punk rock because it's it's sort of a punk rock track, really. That's the way I see it. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just I, I just plug in and play. You know, mm. <clears throat> I went, I went, when I'm doing tracks for other people, if they like it, then that's fine. I just play. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I you know, I don't, I don't I don't even I consider myself to be an average guitarist. I don't consider myself to be in the same league as like you know great guitarist because I ain't that good really. I'm a good songwriter, you know. But I'm not I mean I can I can busk it on guitar. I think if if, if you'll find I actually play the same guitar solo on about fourteen of our songs really. It's, but it's a good guitar solo though. Um, have you written anything that you keep keeping aside for solo stuff but you're not gonna put in the band or mm, no. no. No, I mean this is the, this, this is I get asked this question all the time about solo this, solo that and you know if I've said it once I've said it a thousand times. I'm in a band, right, and its name is Oasis. And once the band is finished, I won't be going solo. It's as simple as that. Because, you know, you know I'll be in one band and one band only. And, that, and that's this band. And, that, you know, like, I'm 30 now, you know. It's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be pissing about like Eric Clapton, man, when I'm 50 odd, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because, you know, you do things like, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't particularly want to go solo anyway. You know? yeah. It'd be boring. How long do you think I'll see Oasis going on? Longs of stones, or...? Oh, uh, well... I'm thinking that far ahead. Well... <clears throat> to be honest with you, I hope to be out of it by the time I'm 35, so I'll give myself another five years. I mean, I don't want to be fighting about, like, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. Well, it was, it's, it's not on, really, is it? You know what I mean? I mean, it's just... You know, it's like... They seem to be, uh, you know, reliving their youth... again and again. And again, and again, you know, it's like they're 50 years of age for crying out loud, you know what I mean? Go look after your fucking grandkids, you know what I mean? They, you know, this is like a young man's game, isn't it? Yeah. Saying that, I do like Neil Young, though. But, um, and then saying that, I would probably be doing the same interview sat here when I'm 62 with a Zimmer frame going, yeah, oh, I love playing live, and I really love to do it for another 30 years. Actually, it'd be, be great to be going on stage when you're like 150. With a cluster in my back at that one, it top one, it? It all, like forgetting the words to all the all the songs. Right? Great, yeah. it's a geriatric old rock star, which is not unlike the Rolling Stones actually. <laughs> Apart from Ronnie Wood, he was a geezer. 
more power to you, Rob. Yeah, no, um, rock and roll star. I mean, uh, um, correct me if I'm wrong. You've been heard saying that. You've said you've said everything you wanted to say in that one yeah. song and the lyrics. Mm. Um, has, has that changed at all? No, I don't. I'm, you know, I hate writing lyrics. It's the one thing that does my head in in, in the songwriting process. It's like because once you've once you've written about going out and having it large and coming home and shagging your bird and then <laughs> what else is that right about I ask myself it's like you just start like I mean you know you just sort of like repeat yourself in it you know which which is generally what I do I just try to make it rhyme you know what I mean and lyrics are rubbish anyway man. Sounds good. well you know, what's a champagne supernova <laughs> I ask you I wrote it I don't even fucking know what it is <laughs> sounds good doesn't it um, just going back a little, um, I hate to bring it up, but when things weren't going so good for the band mm. back in '96, I mean, I know you're good friends with Paul Weller, I know you, you can go pretty well with you two. I mean, w were they around to give you any advice at the time? I mean, like... Well, you see, the, the thing about me is I'm really good at giving advice. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not that good at taking it. You know, I'm, you know, though I, you know, I, saying that it was, it wasn't. There was sort of like about a two month period where it was touch and go for a while, but it, you know, everybody knew what everybody had to do to make, you know, to make, to make the band go on. It wasn't, it wasn't like searching for answers or anything like that. It's like Liam had to stop being a twat, Bono had to stop drinking, you know. I had to stop being a bit, bit of an egomaniac, which I've not quite got around to yet. Uh, but you know. Every, everybody knows what everybody's got to do, like to make it work. And, you know, it's all part of growing up, anyway. You know, okay. I think. Okay, just um, lastly, um, I know, like obviously, we all know how well we get with Richard Ashcroft and Verb, but like the flavour yeah. year almost last year. I mean, so obviously that'll be one of your favourite albums of the last year. What, yep. what else? I mean, like, um, what well, albums last year? Yeah, favourite singles. Corner Shop, mm -hmm. uh, the Travis album. Um, I don't say that though. I, I, you know, I like I like Radiohead and the Verve and Travis and Chemical Brothers and Prodigy, but I don't I don't you know I don't really think that anybody's made a great album for the last five years, and that and that and that's what's included. You know what I mean? I, I just you know I think I don't know, man. You know, it's, with, with like the Verve album, the I think there's about six songs on it that are, that that are top and just before that just don't do it for me. You know, but you know. You know, people don't write great albums anymore. It's as simple as that. I mean, I, and you know, I think the last great album ever written by a British group is definitely maybe. You know, oh, and, I, and, I, and that's not been arrogant. That's a fact. What do you think of Sway's last album coming up? Rubbish. Of course. <laughs> okay. Um, Should have been called throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, man. Cheers. Adios.